My name is Carolyn Bradley, and I work for the Office of Research Development at FSU. And um, as the Arts and Humanities Funding Specialist for our office, um, I'm tasked with growing Arts and Humanities uh, grantsmanship at FSU. I'm intending this virtual workshop as a primer in seeking humanities funding awards. Um, Many humanities scholars do not have a lot of experience in applying for grants and fellowships, so I want to help you learn the basics of the process so that you will feel comfortable getting started on the path. Um, importantly, FSU has a firm infrastructure in place for grant support, so if nothing else, I hope that um, you take away from this workshop that you're not alone in your ventures to apply for uh, grants and fellowships. Um, and the university and my office, Office of Research Development in particular, is here to help you every step of the way. So um, never hesitate to contact my office um, at our email address, ORD at FSU.edu, or you can email me directly since I'm here to help humanities scholars. And um, my email address is cbradley at FSU.edu. Are you all looking at my PowerPoint? Am I showing you? Are you seeing the PowerPoint? OK. Um, Okay. All right, if you're unfamiliar with the Office of Research Development, um, we are dedicated to supporting FSU faculty in their search for research funding. Our mission is to strengthen research competitiveness at FSU and our strategies to achieve that role are equipping researchers for success, building connections, investing in promising new ideas and researchers, and promoting a culture which helps research to flourish. We offer a broad range of services and resources to FSU faculty, and um, this is like our brochure. So as you can see, we offer workshops, focused assistance for new faculty, and proposal development support. Importantly, we offer one-on-one -on -one consultations for faculty at any stage of the funding-seeking process, so you can always reach out to us, um, even if you haven't gotten started yet, even if you don't have um, a particular funding opportunity you want to apply for, even if you just kind of have a general idea, I would like to apply for a grant to complete a certain project I've been thinking about. Um, we can also help you with the crafting of the proposal itself through the provision of proposal templates and boilerplate language, as well as editing services. So we have a lot to offer, so never hesitate to take advantage. Um, okay, I just wanted to... Um, before I get started here, I just kind of wanted to provide some like working definitions of some of these key terms for um, research funding opportunities. So um, you have grants. Um, in general, we talk about research grants. We're talking about funding a specific project. So you you know your proposal will explain the specific project you want to fund. Um, fellowships. You're talking about funding a specific researcher, um, and so um, or arts practitioner. Um, so this, this specific person will be awarded money to do to do how, to spend it how they see fit for their research or art. Um, and then career development awards. Um, those are typically uh, that's that's money intended for a specific early career researcher to undertake a specific research project to begin to establish an independent research program. Um, so my office is here to help you if you're applying for any of these. Um, importantly. The Office of Faculty Development and Advancement um, is particularly um, dedicated to um, helping faculty with fellowships and career development awards. So you can always reach out to them. I've put their website here. Um, the director, um, Dr. Peggy Wright Cleveland, of, um, she's the director of faculty advancement. She's really who you want to talk to. Um, okay. So considerations in applying for humanities research funding. Um, importantly, some humanities scholars um, are reluctant to seek research funding. Unlike in the sciences and the humanities, uh, grant activity has not historically played a central role in the academic culture. Most humanities scholars are not formally trained in graduate school in crafting grant proposals, and many arrived at their first faculty positions without a sense of the kinds of funding opportunities that are available to them and uh, why they might be interested in pursuing these. That said, even as uh, grantsmanship has become, um, it's begun to play a larger role in the humanities departments across academia, um, many humanities scholars remain reluctant to pursue grant activity just because um, 
perhaps, you know, most importantly, it's just, it's not required for their um, tenure promotion opportunities. Um, for a lot of humanities scholars, it doesn't seem to make sense to expend time and resources applying for grants when they have another um, a range of other more pressing responsibilities to get tenure, including usually like writing a book or something. Um, I do think this is an important concern for assistant professors at FSU. Um, in some cases, it, it may not make sense for assistant professors um, to apply for research grants, and um, they may want to postpone efforts to apply for grants or fellowships until after they earn tenure. Um, teaching obligations may present a hurdle. Um, so course release can be tricky. Um, many fellowships require the faculty member to go to another university or location for a semester or full academic year. In these cases, the professor will need to be released from her teaching obligations here at FSU, and she will need to get permission from her department chair and dean. All departments have different rules regarding course release, but for example, in the College of Arts and Sciences, a general rule is that you've had to have been teaching a standard load of courses for the past three years in order to get the course release for, um, in order to accept a fellowship um, to get, get out of your coursework. Um, importantly, though, many exceptions apply, and these conditions can be relaxed. So if you ever wish to apply for a grant or fellowship and that you worry that your teaching obligations might present a hurdle, um, it could be a good idea to reach out to us here at ORD and we'll talk to you and see, see what kinds of options might be available. Um, you might also want to talk to um, your college dean. Um, in general, you know, the, the university is committed to helping faculty members receive these grants and fellowships, so they want to work with you to figure out how they can make it happen. Um, also, you know, to avoid obstacles around course release, um, my office generally recommends that um, faculty think about applying specifically for sabbatical funding opportunities. So we recommend you start thinking three or four years in advance of your sabbatical you know, about what sorts of fellowships or grants you might apply for to make the most of that time. Um, and in fact, if you are three or four years out from your sabbatical now, um, don't hesitate to reach out to me for a consultation now and we can start thinking about that and start making plans. Um, I'd be very happy to meet with you to discuss um, sabbatical opportunities. Um, Finally, uh, many grant opportunities are highly competitive and becoming more so. So given the considerable amount of time required to prepare a viable application, many humanities faculty members are reluctant um, to do so. The Guggenheim Fellowship, for example, has about a five to 6% success rate. Um, that said, I think um, these a lot, a lot of the grants from like the big agencies like um, the National Endowment for the Humanities they have a reputation of being super competitive and they are, um, but maybe it's not so, they're not so much more competitive than, for example, the grants that the science faculty are going for. Um, so, for example, the applicant success rate per program for the NEH varies from about 6% to 40%, but the funding ratio across all the grant programs for the NEH is 16%. And so um, to give some perspective, the NIH has roughly a 20% funding ratio across all its institutes programs. So I think these awards are still very much going for. And um, at the same time, there is um, there are a lot of smaller grants that you can apply for um, that are a lot less competitive. Um, I'm sorry, that are a lot more, yeah, that are a lot less competitive, you have a better chance of getting them. Okay. Okay, so those are concerns about applying. And then um, here are some reasons to apply. The greatest thing which research funding can make possible is time off from teaching to concentrate on research and writing. There are a range of funding opportunities you can apply for, which will replace all or part of your salary to free you from university duties for an entire academic year. You might also apply for funding opportunities such as the NEH summer stipends that will pay you summer salary. to obtain resources, including travel money to conduct research. You can use grants to travel to conduct research in distant libraries or archives, conduct field work, or purchase needed supplies or equipment. Many major research libraries, for example, offer residential fellowships for scholars who wish to use specific archives for current research. 
You can use grants to um, create or enrich educational programs. You might, for example, apply for a grant uh, to bring a panel of speakers to present for students at FSU on a specific topic or to perhaps host a film series or something like that. And um, finally, to build a prestige. Receiving grants and fellowships increases one's academic prestige. It's actually also increases one's likelihood of being awarded more grants and more fellowships in the future. So the more funding opportunities you win, um, the more you'll win later. At the same time, when faculty members receive grants and fellowships, they increase the prestige of FSU as a whole, as well as the prestige of their department and college. So people will like you um, a lot. Okay, steps to prepare a proposal. Okay, so I put together this like 10 point list of um, main steps that you'll have to take. Now, obviously, the more time you have, the more you can do with your proposal. So this really just depends how much time remains between you and the um, agency deadline. But here are the 10 steps I see. Okay, you want to identify the promising NOFO, and I'm using the term NOFO. NEH uses that, so it's the Notice of Funding Opportunity. Some agencies will say RFP, like Request for a Proposal, some will say Solicitation. Anyway, I'm going to say NOFO for this um, presentation. Um, contact ORD, so that would be contact us so we can help you. Um, Contact the appropriate FSU office for proposal compliance review and submission. So whether that ends up being the Sponsored Research Administration, SRA, or the um, FSU Research Foundation, FSURF. Um, you want to contact your pre-award officer there um, to let them know that you are intending to submit a proposal and they'll let you know when they need your materials uploaded um, and stuff like that. Usually the, the general rule is they want your materials uploaded to ramp three days before the agency deadline so that they have time to go through it and um, make all their approvals. Okay. Make a formal plan, checklist, and time timeline. So now that you know you've got you know your personal deadline, so your deadline probably three days before the agency deadline, you can make your formal plan. These are the checklist, all the things you're gonna need to um, all the materials you're going to need for your proposal and the timeline and when you're going to need all these materials by. Okay, contact the program officer. So you want to contact the um, um, program officer to kind of describe your project, see, you know, get his feedback. So maybe he will tell you um, whether it's a good fit, whether it sounds like it would work for this program or might perhaps even another program. Um, Contact your grants analyst about a budget. So most departments have a grants analyst in the humanities, if that's less so, there may be a grants analyst at the college level or we here at ORD are prepared to help if you don't have a grants analyst. But someone needs to help you with your budget. And we don't expect that humanities faculty know how to put together a proposal budget. Um, okay, gather needed materials and information from external parties so that might be your letters of support just all the all the different materials you'll need and the information that might be information about um fsu compliance issues stuff like that um compose a compelling narrative so that will be the long, longest portion of your proposal um upload your materials to ramp ramp is um if you don't know the fsu um software system for um research administration and your proposal needs to be uploaded there. It stands for Research Administration Management Portal. And you'll upload your materials there. The central office, the central research administration office will review it. If they give their approval, they will, they will formally submit it to the agency. You wanna confirm receipt by the agency. So make sure you can usually, depending on the agency, but for instance, with like NEH proposals, you can check you know, online that they actually received it before the deadline. So you wanna make sure they did. Okay. Okay, so to identify the promising NOFO, um, we usually recommend um, scholars uh, begin their funding search with Pivot. Um, Pivot is a discovery tool that compiles funding opportunities um, from public and private sponsors, allowing researchers to easily search for NOFOs. Currently, Pivot has more than 28,000 funding opportunities for more than uh, 14,000 sponsors 
totaling over $75 million in awards. The tool allows researchers to create searches tailored to their research areas and then receive weekly alerts, letting them know of relevant funding opportunities that have been posted in the past week. It also houses scholarly profiles, allowing researchers to search for and connect with collaborators. Um, if you don't yet have a pr pivot profile um, and you would like to get one, or actually I should say a pivot account just because the profile has a specific meaning to pivot. If you don't have a pivot account yet, um, send me an email and we can, talk, we can get you set up. Um, okay, there are a wide range of humanities sponsors. I am listing here some of the main ones that FSU has um, historically been awarded by. Um, so the National Endowment for the Humanities, NEH, the US Fulbright Program, the US Department of Education, ED. And then there are some state and local agencies, the Florida Division of Arts and Culture, the Florida Education Fund, the Florida Humanities Council. And then some private organizations include um, the American Council of Learned Societies, ACLS, Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, Institute for Advanced Studies, Institute for Aegean Prehistory, the John Templeton Foundation, and there are you know, so many more, but FSU faculty have been successful with these um, and a range of others as well. Um, about ACLS, um, ACLS is a federation of scholarly organizations committed to the advancement of studies in the humanities and social sciences. And we're actually going to have um, uh, their senior director of US programs, John Paul Christie, um, give a presentation um, on their uh, peer reviewed fellowship and grant proposals um, programs on Friday, April 8th. So if you'd like to register, just get that link. Um, this presentation will illuminate how ACLS develops programs and funding opportunities for scholars, who reads and evaluates proposals for the organization, and how scholars can co communicate their project effectively to these audiences. If you would like to register, you can just go to the ORD events page. Okay. So again, I'm still kind of talking about how to find um, a NOFO that works for the project you have in mind. So another place you might want to check out is this um, funding for the humanities page we have on that um, ORD website. Um, so you can see I started here by talking about um, encouraging pivot, because <laughs> pivot's great. Um, Okay, but I did. I do have a few lists here of um, prominent awards available to humanities researchers, and I start with the Teiru Awards. Um, Teiru Awards, or Top American Research University Awards, are um, funding awards which have been specifically included in the Teiru reports, which um, factor into the metrics that determine whether or not FSU gets performance-based funding. So that includes um, the ACLS fellowships, the Fulbright US Scholar Award Program, the Getty Scholar Grants, the Guggenheim Fellowships, the MacArthur Fellowship Program, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation Distinguished Achievement Award Program. I'm actually not 100% sure if that's still active. I've been trying to find out. Um, the National Endowment for the Humanities Fellowship, the National Humanities Center for Residential Fellowships, and the Woodrow Wilson's International Center for Scholarship Fellowships. Um, So those are the Teiru Awards. I also list a range of different external funding opportunities here, which kind of have a broad humanities focus. Um, you might check them out. And then um, finally, um, the Council on Research and Creativity Internal Funding Program includes the Arts and Humanities Program Enhancement Grant, or what they call the OPEG grant. Um, and with a maximum award amount of $20,000, the OPEG grant is designed to support the creation, production, and dissemination um, of arts and humanities research and creativity at FSU at any stage of development, including initial or mid-stage project development, presentation or performance, and final publication. So you might wanna check that out. Um, okay. Okay, so the next step, after you found 
a funding opportunity which you think seems like a strong fit for the project you have in mind, um, contact ORD, contact me, um, and we can start putting together a plan which will include the following seven steps, as well as perhaps other options, depending on how much time we have left. Um, okay, so um, yeah, you will definitely need to contact um, the appropriate FSU office for proposal compliance review and submission. And um, so the two main central offices for this sort of thing is the SRA and the FSURF. And every division or department has a pre-award grant officer at both of these um, units. So you really want to talk to your specific pre-award grant officer um, about what you'll need to, um, what they'll need from you in order to uh, get your proposal submitted. If you don't know who your program officer is, your pre-award grant officer, that's of course fine. You can email me and I can help you or you can email the director of that. Either one. But the SRA is for public funding awards and the FSURF is for private funding awards. Now, sometimes it's not entirely clear just because you'll have money coming from a range of places. Um, in those cases, we have to talk to maybe both agencies and they'll tell us, but in general, SRA for public funding awards and FSURF for private funding awards. Okay, so you wanna to talk to them sooner than later because they have a lot on their plate, and as soon as they can get your um, proposal on their to-do list, um, the better. Also, like I said, they usually want three days advance. Um, they want the proposal in to them three days in advance before the funding agency deadline, so um, you don't want to miss that. Okay, now you want to make a formal plan, a checklist, and timeline. So You'll create a checklist of exactly what's required for the proposal. So in order to do that, you will shred the NOFO um, by reading line by line, developing a checklist of each requirement. Every question, every request for description, every must, will, shall, should, gets its own checklist item. Um, ORD is happy to help you create this. Um, I usually work with faculty to help them create a, a proposal checklist and a proposal timeline. So you can see in this example checklist, it's just an Excel document. And so I have a column for documents, a column for document elements. So some, sometimes like a document will have like several pieces. So document elements, page limit for the document, specific notes, and then questions that um, are still open that we need to investigate. Um, okay, so this is the proposal checklist. And then you also want to accompany your proposal checklist with a proposal timeline. Um, so with the proposal timeline, you want to work backwards from a proposal due date to establish the timeline. Um, developing and sticking to a proposal schedule um, will help you decrease stress and anxiety, increase your ability to ask for help, and increase the proposal quality. It will also allow you to think ahead Sometimes you need a range of documents in before you can do the next step. Um, so you can plan, okay, I need to make sure I have these pieces in before I, and so that I'll have enough time to do this piece. Okay. Now the checklist will let you know all of the proposal components you're gonna need. Um, some typical proposal components include an abstract, the abstract is a summary of the proposal. In the abstract, you want to be clear about your specific area of research within your discipline. A lot of the times, if a funding agency's program officer is not familiar with your specific area of research, she might use your abstract as the basis for seeking potential reviewers. Um, if this is the case, you want to make sure that your abstract includes the most Um, appropriate search terms to characterize your research. Additionally, if your project is funded, your summary will become that face of your project on the agency's website and other documents such as their annual report. So you want to write the abstract strategically to communicate your research to the public. Um, the concept of like 
making sure your abstract and your proposal and your final products are research, I mean, our general audience friendly is becoming more important as federal research funding is becoming more scrutinized by um, politicians and taxpayers who may only have access um, to small portions of your work. Okay. Okay, the narrative, I'll talk about the narrative last just because that's gonna be um, by far the largest section. Um, okay, the budget. Okay, you'll need to develop a budget for your project. As I said, you can work with your um, department's grants analyst to do this. Um, you will first, of course, need to check the NOFO to see how much money is actually available. The amount of funding available will fundamentally determine how much and what types of work you can actually do, and thus your methods and work plan. If you need help formulating a budget, um, you can also uh, not just talk to grants analyst or us, my office. Okay, and the budget justification, um, this will actually specifically describe how each budget item will support the proposed objects, the, the proposed objectives. The, ju the justification will also break down how costs have been calculated. So it's called like a justification because it's like, we are buying this, the, just the justification is for, based on our proposal our strategic aims is this. Okay, so in some cases, your budget will include subawards. In these cases, the prime award is awarded to FSU, but then FSU sponsored research channels the money to an external university for a PI, a group of PIs there to carry out a portion of the work. The subawarded PIs will be responsible for programmatic decision-making and have considerable discretionary judgment in the performance of the work. In some cases, your budget will include consultants. In these cases, part of the prime award is spent to pay for consultant to provide advisory services. Consultants are typically paid at an hourly rate. In some cases, your budget might include contractors. A contractor provides goods or services within normal business operations and operates in a competitive environment providing similar goods and services to a variety of customers. A contractor provides, for example, data processing, translating services, routine analytical testing services, etc. So if you are unsure about the appropriate classification of costs, whether it's a subaward, consultant, or contractor, um, the appropriate research administration office, whether it's the SRA or FSURF, is going to be able to help you with that. OK. <laughs> references. You want a re list of references employed in the proposal itself. Um, appendices. These are supplemental materials, such as an evaluation plan, data management plan, data collection instruments, et cetera. You will include brief resumes for the project director and other staff with major responsibilities for the project. Include key persons listed in the budget, as well as key consultants to the project. List job or position descriptions for any staff who will be hired but have not yet been selected. Letters of commitment or support. So letters of commitment should be provided from appropriate officials confirming the institution's commitment to the project. Letters of support can also be included. And these um, might be from scholarly experts in the field, community leaders, participants in the project, or beneficiaries of the project. I usually like to um, draft the letters of support and the letters of commitment because sometimes they need specific information in there. And then you can just, you know, usually the person will just, you know, maybe, maybe make their beaks and send it back to you. It's fine. Um, okay. The narrative. Okay. So the narrative um, is basically the project. It's also called the project description. It's basically an overview of your project. Um, so it opens with the introduction or research question. And here you lay out the general research question you're considering. Then you have... Um, the significance and um this is arguably the most important um component of the proposal and really the rest of the proposal kind of springs from that um it's the main factor by which your proposal will be judged and um it boils down to what is the scholarly context for your research what is the existing literature on your topic to which you're contributing and how does your research build on or change what is known about your topic Okay, the methodology. Your methodology is your plan of work. 
Uh, what are the data, materials, or pieces of evidence required to answer your research questions? What are the standards in your discipline for collecting and analyzing data or studying various types of materials? What can you accomplish given the budgetary constraints in your project? Okay. The timeline, the proposal timeline documents each step involved in your project so your viewers can know when you anticipate hitting certain milestones and when you ultimately anticipate completing the project. The timeline should be based on your ideal process. You will want to describe your planned process for ensuring that your research findings are made available to your target audiences to maximize the benefit of the research without delay. And finally, you're going to want to make a case that you, as the PI, are the best possible person to conduct this specific research project. So you'll want to emphasize your expertise and credentials in the research area. If you have a mentor who has perhaps even more expertise in the research area and you're going to be leaning on that person um, for guidance, you might talk about that as well. Also, some NOFOs have eligibility requirements for the PI. For example, she must have completed a PhD within the last seven years, must have a tenure track faculty appointment, et cetera. In that case, you'll use um, the PI qualifications document to confirm that you match the eligibility requirements. Okay. Okay, so I just want to show you a sample NOFA so you can kind of um, see what we're talking about here. Um, so for an example would be the NEH's infrastructure and capacity building challenge grant. So let's start by looking at the program webpage. Okay. So here in the right hand corner, you have grant snapshot. So you can see that the maximum award amount is a million dollars. It's open to organizations, so a lot of the times um, funding opportunities are available to um, organizations like FSU as opposed to like individual researchers. Um, so when you apply, you're actually like applying on behalf of FSU. Um, the application was made available on March 14th. The application due date is May 17th, 2022. Um, note that there's an optional draft due date, April 6, 2022. So for that, you can actually send a preliminary draft of your proposal to the grant program officer and um, she'll give you feedback and then you can incorporate the feedback into your final proposal. So that's a great option. So we always recommend that um, researchers take advantage of that. Um, okay. So if you scroll down, you can see um, that there are some resources available to help you. Um, including was actually right now it's just this webinar. Um, my coworker and I were noticing that there's just like literally just like in the last few days there's been a change in the website that used to always have like sample successful proposals down here from the project program but not more. But now we have um, this webinar that you can use to help you. Okay. Oh and there it is still I was mistaken. Okay so um so a sample work plan, and then here's your sample application narratives. Okay, my apologies. Okay, so they are still here. Um, and here you can look at successful proposals in the past. Um, okay, so that's really a great option for you. Um, okay, so if you want to actually open the NOFO, which is right here, It's being difficult. Okay. 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 Um, see the deadlines here. Um, always check eligibility just because FSU isn't eligible for all funding opportunities. We are a 501c3 tax exempt status um, accredited uh, public institution of higher education, US nonprofit organization. So we are eligible for this. Um, if you go to the eligibility, you'll see um,
So additional eligibility information, you're limited to submitting a single application for infrastructure and capacity building challenge grants per calendar year. So that means FSU as a whole is limited to submitting just one. So um, that means this is a limited submissions funding opportunity. Um, it means that um, you need to um, let me know I run the limited submission funding opportunity um, program for um, my office. So just anytime you have a limited submission funding opportunity, be sure to um, Talk to me. You can check on our limited submission portal. Um, the, just the idea is that if it, it's possible that there are other researchers who would also like to apply for this funding opportunity. If that's the case, we'll have to hold an internal competition and decide on the, decide on the strongest project. And then that project will be advanced to the agency. Um, okay. Okay, so the application package here, when you're creating your checklist, you're going to want to base it on the application uh, package requirements. So you can see these here. It has um, these forms that they're going to need. This is um, compliance form for federal you know, laws, um, cover sheet, a site location form, a range of different forms. Um, and then you'll have the narrative, the budget justification, the work plan, institutional profile. So you can see there's some overlap with the sample I showed you and some differences. They're all, they're all unique. Um, but basically, when you create your um, checklist, you want to go through the entire NOFO. You can see this is 39 pages and literally make sure every single instruction is accounted for. Um, because these agencies do get a lot of proposals, they can afford to be picky, um, and they will um, refuse to review proposals that don't follow the instructions. Um, okay. And then I did want to show you one more thing. I wanted to show you the review criteria. So the review criteria, just it just lays out what the reviewers are going to be looking for. So you want to start by looking at this stuff, and then you want to end by checking that you're completing all these expectations. Okay. Okay, contact the program officer. So basically the idea is you want to get to know the sponsor. Um, Agencies develop funding opportunities in order to help them achieve uh, certain goals. Thus, you want to be sure that your project is a good fit for the funder's priorities and that you can effectively communicate why in your proposal. You must determine that the, pri the funder's priorities, what the funder's priorities are before you start writing the proposal. So your whole thing is you need to convince them. They have these certain objectives. You need to convince them that your proposal is going to help them meet those objectives. You want to develop a multi-dimensional understanding of the funding, funding agency um, by checking out different resources, including um, the funder's website. So you'll find a lot of useful information there, including in their pages on About Us, priorities, history, et cetera. You also want to you know, look into the details of the NOFO, look into the strategic and annual reports of the agency, um, read the speeches and presentations by the top officials, also, most of these agencies um, let you see previous awards or awardees, so those can help you see, okay, these ones are the ones that are getting funded. This is clearly important to them. Um, and you can watch the agency webinars like I showed you in the last NOFO, stuff like that. Um, okay, you want to check out proposals which the agency has awarded in the past, ideally for the same program for which you will be applying. Most of the large federal agencies list on their website the PIs and titles of previously successful projects. If an FSU professor has won the award before, you might reach out to him or her directly to ask if he or she will, will share their proposal and budget with you. If not, if there hasn't been any um, 
FSU faculty who've been awarded for that program. Um, and you instead see that all prior winners have been from other universities. You might reach out to three of those and perhaps um, one will agree to let you see their proposal. Now, as you saw <coughs> for NEH programs, you can usually, they'll usually have some sample proposals up. So you can just look at those, but um, a lot of other agencies you might not have the option. So you could just write to the um, professor and say, you know, would you mind, I'm applying for this program. Would you mind letting me look at your successful proposal so I can get a sense of what the reviewers are looking for. Um, also, you always want to ask if they'll send the budget. Um, so send, I would say send out an email to three different successful winners, and maybe one will say yes. Um, whether they'll actually send the budget, I don't know, just because a lot of faculty are reluctant to send the budget just because there can be sensitive information like about people's salaries and stuff, but um, it's still worth it to ask. Um, Okay, and then finally, um, build a relationship with the program officer. So the NOFOs usually identify the program officer at the bottom. Um, and you can uh, really, as soon as you've kind of decided that you're pretty interested in a specific program, you can go ahead and send that program officer an email. It's a great way to kind of start a connection. Um, the program officers do have say in who gets awarded, so it's worthwhile. And you'll also, that person has more insight than anyone else on what that program is specifically looking to fund. So they can tell you, they can help you shape your project from the very inception, like so that it's, it's what they kind of are looking for. Um, and as I said, with, for instance, with the NEH, sometimes you have the option of, um, um, an, of sending the program officer an, op, an early draft of your work and you want to take advantage. Okay. So <coughs> I wanted to show you just a little bit of what kind of stuff you want to be looking for in a sponsor uh, website when you're trying to learn more about the sponsor. So this is just the NEH's main website. Um, have your upcoming grant deadlines. So it's always good to keep abreast of like what are some upcoming um, funding opportunities. And you can click on grants here. You can see their future grant programs here. Um, if you want to search for a specific um, program, you can come here. Um, if you want to learn about the application review process, they break it down, all of the steps. So after your proposals and their lab, this, they're going to go through these certain steps. Um, and then you have a range of different virtual grant workshops, so these are great. Um, also, you can search for past awards. Um, so if you want to see, if you wanted to see, for instance, Awards which have been um, funded to FSU, you could just um, you could just go here and you can see 106 matches, um, and they'll be the most recent awards first. You can also search by um, topic, um, grant number, or um, PI name. Okay. Okay, so then you'll want to contact your department's grant analyst about the budget. So that's also something you want to do. This is all stuff really, this is all prepar preparations because you want to do this early so that your grants analyst can kind of have that down on his to-do list. I need to help this person with their budget. Um, and y'all will probably just need, you'll describe your project and the grants analyst will, you know, help you th think through how much things will cost um, what sounds realistic given the award budget. Um, okay, you'll want to gather needed materials and information from external parties. So those needed materials, um, they might be letters um, or other documents about, you know, FSU, like, you know, the 
the last one we're looking at is like institutional profiles. So sometimes they need to know what kind of resources are available at the university. Um, and then other information, what might be, there might be things that you need to talk to the SRA about, um, about regarding compliance issues. Um, so you'll want to go ahead and, you know, start gathering those materials. Um, of course, a lot of the time you won't, you may not know who to ask. And that's, you know, that's the kind of thing my office can help you with. Um, okay, finally, you want to um, write the narrative. Um, ideally, you know, you want to make your proposal um, intriguing. So especially the introduction. And so like, I was always taught, you know, to, you know, the best way to captivate um, the reviewer's um, curiosity is to just kind of like sell the mystery of it all. Like, um, you know, like there's like a whodunit mystery, there's a body on the floor whodunit. So you want to kind of create this like fascinating question to investigate, show that there's a lot at stake and um, get the reviewer to feel interested in and genuinely motivated to find out the answers to your research questions. Um, okay. And you want to persuade that your project is innovative. So basically that you have a groundbreaking method of inquiry, and that might mean you're adopting a whole new theoretical orientation, or perhaps adapting a common theoretical orientation in a new kind of interesting way. Um, you want to persuade that your proposal is feasible, so that your plan sound realistic and doable within the constraints of the budget and persuade that your project is promising, that there's a strong likelihood that your project will lead to um, new and consequential findings. So those are the things you want to emphasize in your proposal. Um, all of those will relate to the larger issue of significance. This is the significance of your project. Okay. Um, when you have all of your materials prepared, reviewed, you're ready to upload to RAMP. Um, it will go to the SRA or the FSURF. They will approve the materials. They might have to send things back to you if there are concerns. Um, so the earlier you can get up, the better. Um, there will, like I said, they will say three days. Um, and then once they have submitted it, you want to check um, that the agency received it, um, just to be sure, um, just because like they do have hard deadlines. And a lot of times the deadlines are at 5 p.m. Sometimes they can be at noon. So make sure you don't know just the day, also know the time. Um, OK. So um, that's kind of my primer on humanities research. If you want any systems at any step of the way, or you're interested in having me coordinate a mock review session for you, or um, you want to start thinking about sabbatical funding opportunities, um, just send me an email, um, cbradley.fsu.edu, and I'm very happy to help.